Over the weekend, the death toll rose from Tuesday's massive earthquake in Turkey. Now more than 12,000 people are known dead, and there are fears that that number could go as high as 40,000. International rescue teams have quickly come to Turkey's aid in the aftermath of the quake. Monica Novotny is with one of those teams and joins us now from Istanbul, Turkey. Hey, Monica. Hey, Tanakis. Well, rescuers here talk about a 72-hour window of opportunity to save someone who's been buried alive by an earthquake. Now, after that, it's not that survival is impossible, but it is highly unlikely. However, rescuers here still have hope because they continue to pull people alive out of the rubble. Unfortunately, at this point, they know that time is not on their side. Now, I traveled here with one of the rescue teams and had the chance to go around with them and see what it is they do. The Miami-Dade search and rescue team boarded its plane quickly. In all, there were 70 people and six specially trained dogs. The plane was no ordinary one. It was a huge Air Force C-5 transport plane, its cargo hold large enough to fit six Greyhound buses. The trip started at Homestead Air Force Base in Florida, where the team boarded the C-5. Then it was off to Dover, Delaware, about a two-and-a-half-hour flight for refueling. And that's where I joined them. From Dover, we were off to Istanbul, still 12 hours away. Ever since this earthquake hit, it's been a race against time. But for rescue workers moving their teams, their dogs, and all of their equipment, in this case, 115,000 pounds of it, takes time. And unfortunately, that is a luxury that the people in Turkey just don't have. And there was another problem. A torrential rainstorm pounded Dover and dangerous lightning delayed the flight. All the while, the clock was ticking. Elena Lopez is a canine specialist with the Miami-Dade rescue team. I asked her if she felt the time crunch. Absolutely, all of us do. We're very anxious to get there. We, we would have liked to see a, a smoother trip because we have had several delays, but we're still very hopeful. Again, we, we know we're going to find live victims, and that's what we're going to do. Once on the ground, the equipment was offloaded and the Miami team joined forces with a team from Fairfax, Virginia, in one of the hardest-hit areas, the town of Izmit. The teams worked late into the night, sifting through the rubble, searching for survivors. The people who used to live in this building are still missing two family members, so they dug a deep hole back in the side of this mound of rubble, and they're trying to listen now. They've called the rescuers back. They've dropped mics in. They're hoping to hear sounds of breathing, voices, or even Tell just a heartbeat. Absolute quiet. Unfortunately for this family, like so many others, the news was not good. Tell we're all very, very sorry. sorry. But each day is a new opportunity for the rescue teams, though the likelihood of finding survivors becomes more remote. Over the weekend, there were several rescues, including this 10-year-old girl pulled out of the rubble by an Israeli rescue team. It's been nearly a week since the earthquake, but there are still many sites that have yet to be searched. A family of three is reported missing from this collapsed building. The team springs into action. Elena and her dog, Taya, perform the critical job. Under Elena's guidance, Taya begins sniffing the rubble. She's trained to identify the scent of living people. If she finds it, she'll bark enthusiastically. The team waits patiently. Taya is their only hope of finding survivors. Other dogs join the search, scan any crevice that could possibly contain life. In the end, this search comes up empty. Back at the camp, Elena and Taya are exhausted. And how'd she do today? I think she did well. She was frustrated because she didn't find someone. But, you know, I really hope that next time we go out, yeah, we'll find someone. Mm -hmm. But she was searching, that's for sure, the three of them. She was working it and out they there. They were working it out. And the teams will continue to work as long as there is hope that another survivor can be brought to safety. Now, one of the things that we've experienced personally here is the appreciation of the Turkish people. They have come up to us. One man in particular stopped us while we were working and offered us gifts and thanked us as Americans for coming here and helping their people. Monica, what these rescue crews are doing is incredible. They're traveling across the world to help people out that they've never even met. Why do they do it? You know, Tanakis, many of these people are volunteers, and they told me that they choose to do this. They said that they just love to help people, that if they can even save one life, 
that all of this work, all of this effort is worth it. They also talked a lot about teamwork and camaraderie, and they said that coming here and having the chance to work as a group and save people's lives is an amazing experience. Monica Novotny in Istanbul, Turkey. We'll have another report from you tomorrow.